Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, top 10 tools for the beginning knife maker. So I get a lot of mail from guys who say, you know, I'm interested in becoming a knife maker. The hobby seems appealing to me, but you know, I just don't have a lot of money. I can't spend money on all these tools or I don't have these tools. I don't know what tools I need. So this video is for you guys. The fact is to get started in knife making, you don't need tons and tons of expensive tools. Now look, professionals like me, of course, I've got $10,000 worth of tools or whatever the number is sitting around my shop, but that's because I'm trying to save time, get a little more precision, wring just a little bit more out of my time. But if you're just starting out, you can start with very simple tools. So let's get on it and I'll show you what we're talking about. Tool number one. This is a file, the foundational tool of all precision metalwork. A century and a half ago, a skilled metal worker could pretty much make an entire steam engine with a file. A 10 inch double cut bastard file can be used to do almost anything you'll ever need to do with a piece of metal, other than drilling a hole. Now, other things can go faster, other tools may be a little more precise, but hey, this costs 10 bucks. Also useful round files, mill files, hobby files, chainsaw files, needle files, there are a million different kinds of files, and they're all useful. You can make a knife almost entirely from a file if you're willing to sweat long enough. Buy a good quality file like this Nicholson. And don't be afraid to modify them to do specialized tasks. Tool number two. A good quality hacksaw with a bimetal blade will quickly cut through a kneeled tool steel. Even if you have power tools, sometimes it's quicker to just grab a hacksaw than it is to set something up in an abrasive chop saw or a metal cutting band saw. You'll also find that they're much better than power tools for cutting handcuffs off the arms of your teenage son's friends. Don't even ask. Cost somewhere around 20 bucks. Tool number three. Every metalworking shop needs a bench vise, or two, or three, or anyway. You want to be able to swivel the vise head so that you can change the orientation of your work. Some of them will articulate on two axes also, but for most of the things that you need to do, swiveling on one axis is enough. Anyway, you also want some kind of soft jaw insert to keep from marring your work. I generally use pieces of leather, but there are aluminum soft jaws, plastic ones, whatever. Cheap vices will start around 50 bucks, but you'll never be sorry if you spend a good bit more. A 4 inch jaw model is a good size for knife making. I have a bigger, more expensive one, but I actually don't use it as much as my cheap little 4s. And if you're supporting the handcuff on your teenage son's buddy so that you don't cut his arm off while cutting off the handcuff with a hacksaw, yeah, bench vice. All day long. And tool number four. Knives have holes. Drills make holes. If you're really strapped for cash, the old hand drill or even a brace and bit will work. But look, if at all humanly possible, buy a drill press. A drill press will really improve the precision and quality of your drilling. And they're not that expensive. If you can't afford to buy a new one, buy used but a good solid drill press can be found at places like Home Depot for well under 200 bucks. When you buy the drill press, buy a drill vise too. I have an $800 Kurt vise on my mill, but this little El Cheapo works just fine on my drill press. You don't need something super fancy. I recommend using cobalt drill bits, which last longer than high-speed steel, and unlike titanium nitride coated bits, can be resharpened without degrading the quality of the bits. Professional machinists like to call a drill bit a drill, and they get all hot under the collar if you call them bits. But you know what? Everybody on the planet calls them a bit, so that's what I call them too. Tool number five. Sandpaper. Not really a tool, but super important. 
dirty little knife making secret. You'll spend more money as a knife maker on abrasives than you will on steel. Buy it by the sheet and tear it up for specialized work. Use sanding blocks. You can buy them or you can make your own from scrap wood, suiting them to the exact demands of whatever work you're working on at the time. The go-to is wet or dry sandpaper, which you can wet down with water or soapy water or oil, all kinds of different things to keep them from loading up. But lately, all kinds of interesting coatings and backings have been introduced with all kinds of useful properties. Buy packets of 60 and 120 sandpaper intended for woodworking and then move up to 220, 320 or 400, 600 and maybe even a thousand of wet or dry. That's a good starter kit. Cost, oh, 40 or 50 bucks. Tool number six. You can buy digital calipers pretty cheap which will be perfectly adequate for most knife making needs. Now of course they make old-fashioned calipers that have little dials but the digitals are easier to use and they work just fine measuring to the thousandths of an inch they may not be as accurate as more expensive calipers or micrometers but for beginners these cheap models are perfect a million and one uses in the knife making shop cost 30 bucks or so from places like Grizzly and Enco when they break dump them buy another one tool number seven you can buy little sets of precision machinist squares, rulers, and sometimes maybe even a carbide marker or a centering square or some other little machinist gizmos for pretty cheap from places like Grizzly and Enco. Plan on spending 20, 30, maybe 40 bucks. Tool number eight. Nobody in the history of the world has ever quite had enough clamps. Welder's clamps are a good place to start. They're reasonably cheap and they work. But over time, you'll end up using bar clamps, parallels, pipe clamps, trigger clamps, angle clamps, strap clamps, C clamps. If I could swim in clamps, I would. Every time you go to the hardware store, just grab one or two. After you've accumulated a few welder's clamps, the next thing I'd go to is bar clamps. Those trigger clamps are kind of fun too. It won't seem like it's breaking your budget, and over time you'll have enough to do what needs doing. Tool number nine. Gonna make knives, you gotta make them sharp. I recommend the Easy Lap Diamond Stone 2 inch by 6 inch with heavy grit on one side and fine on the other. They also make some that have just a single kind of grit on them. There are other brands of diamond stones that some people like. I just happen to like Easy Laps. Personal preference. Of course, you can also use Arkansas stones, Japanese water stones, ceramics, hones. There are all kinds of different sharpening devices. 20 bucks to 75 bucks. Hey, you can spend a lot more if you want, but somewhere in there you can find something that'll work for you. Okay, so now we're getting to tool number 10. The good news is that so far we've probably spent, I don't know, less than $500 if you buy everything new. If you go used, you could even go a lot cheaper than that. But tool number 10, I hate to tell you, we're going to go ahead and break the bank. The 2x72 inch belt grinder is the king of the knife making shop. Hey, it is what it is. Now listen, do you need a big high quality belt grinder to start out making knives? Absolutely not. The great sword makers of Japan and Seville and Damascus, those guys did not have belt grinders. But we live in the 21st century. So, you can make knives with files and dinky little belt grinders and angle grinders and quarter horse bench grinders and just all kinds of improvised or goofy or labor intensive devices or approaches. It all works, it's all possible. But when you think you're serious about knife making, you're gonna get a serious grinder. You just are. And they don't give them away. Sorry. A Bader B3 or a KMG or any of the other professional quality grinders will probably run you, oh, close to two grand all in. If you're just starting out, though, you don't need one immediately. But at a certain point, well, kids, it's a disease. What can I say? Now, don't panic. If you get serious about making knives, there's a market out there for knives, and you can sell enough of them to pay for the grinder. Now another important point, there are cheaper 2x72 inch belt grinders from manufacturers like Coot and Grizzly and others. For light duty work or for starters, hey, 
they're probably great so dip your toe into the water if you want but me I wouldn't trade my baiter for seven grizzlies I'm just saying now when you first get started you don't have to heat treat your own knives you can send them out to somebody else and have them do it uh, but at a certain point if you're interested in forging obviously you're gonna have to have a forge or if you just want to do stock removal stainless steel type knives eventually you're probably gonna to want to have your own heat treating oven whatever the case you're gonna need some kind of source of heat it might be a propane torch an oxyacetylene torch induction heater uh, heat treating oven a forge charcoal coal gas I mean it could be a lot of different things but somewhere along the, the line, you're going to need that tool. But you don't need it quite yet. All right, I hope that's enough to dispel the myth that, you know, you, you're going to have to fill up your shop with really expensive tools just to make your first knife. You absolutely don't. Uh, I've done a bunch of videos where I show how you can make knives pretty easily. I won't say easily, but you can make knives with fairly limited palettes of tools. So if you want to check out some of those videos right here, we can show you how it's done. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.